This is episode 54 of the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, July 26, 2021. In today's show, we enjoy a Munich Hells, an IPA, a Hoppy Lager, and a Pastry Stout. Before we get to today's show, a quick note on our near-term programming and scheduling for the Piecraft Show. We are going to be taking the month of August 2021 off, so there will be no weekly shows in August. The next show will be on September 6, 2021. Thank you for your continued support, and have a super awesome summer. It's the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got your other host, Charlie. How do? We got tech guy, Steve. Present. 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 Gifted. (laughs) Got a couple of of different breweries that we're going to... Crack a lack. Yeah, there it is. Hit that hit that first beer up, Charlie. Let's get the oh, show started. Oh man, that's my favorite sound. So, so Steve, last weekend me and uh me and Charlie shot up to Humble Sea, yep. Santa Cruz. Road trip. We did do a little road trip, made a mm. made a little beer loop. This one this time we were well hosted but not over hosted. Correct. We uh so we uh so today we're gonna you're gonna pop a couple beers from uh from Humble Sea, and then we also did, uh, we, we went down to Burgeon the other day. All three of us did. And, uh, with a guest. Little, for the Nate, uh, Nate event at, uh, at Burgeon at the Arbor. Mm-hmm. Had some wings, had some beers. Sample a couple of those and talk Stupid about Stupid wings, I think. They were, they were really good. They were phenomenal. I was dumbfounded. <laughs> no, it was fantastic. So, the, uh, yeah, this lagger. Oh man, just nothing better than a crisp, wonderful smelling beer. So, Charlie, what do we got here? The authentic double decocted. Wow. Yeah, uh, the authentic double decocted Munich Hell's uh, Lager. So it's a four point nine percent. It's got a guy uh, their their swampy sea monster with uh, later hosing on. Pretty cool graphics but yeah this baby's tasty what's this come in at there 4.9 4.9 just a light crispy boy yeah that's a decent uh decent show there let me tell you My, you know what we tasted some great beers this weekend or the past weekend i mean it was super yummy i mean was this on tap or- uh, I don't remember. I think it was. Oh, no, you know what? It was not because it didn't come out until Sunday. Oh, okay. Um, I was drinking those slushies and... Man, they had that, that cucumber yeah, that we had had. Yeah, cucumber. Um, wow. So they had the uh, the cucumber on tap. They also had um, slushies made out of cucumber. Yeah. It was- so, so this is a... Uh, uh, Munich Helles, uh, double cock, double decocted, naturally carbonated, and uh, horizontally lagered German lager beer with Hallertau Mittenfru hops. I like it. Yeah, it's really good. I'm a- super light, super crispy. They actually just got this in. I, I saw they they posted it at all the Bottle Logic or Bottle, bottle craft, craft, excuse me, yeah. Bottle Craft locations popped up with this this beer today. Um, Gosh, it's, it's just good. super light. 4.9%. 4.9%. Perfect with this heat. Mm. The um, <sighs> It's perfect. Bringing the heat. Just clear. Steve, going back for another taste. <laughs> That's just... It's a little wow. sweet, like mm-hmm. sweet, malty. I'm shaking it. I'm yeah. shaking it. Little hoppy can't nose. Get into my glass. It'd be just, a perfect Oktoberfest beer. Yeah. Obviously. No, I mean, it's on. That's just no, I mean, a great just, beer. Hey, Deft has their Marzen for their Deftoberfest. Get mm. ready. Mm. It's already. I mean, I saw a picture of it on Instagram today. It looked fantastic. But I digress. This beer is fantastic. No, it's it's great. We I should have just done four of these yeah. today. <laughs> right? I know. I, uh, I, I bought it. Still a- good. I, yeah, exactly. I bought a I bought a twelve pack of that mm-hmm. right before the beginning of No Buy July. Yeah, good thing you no, you yeah, post dated that check. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Under the old the credit card bill comes in August. Mm-hmm. Well, who's uh who's saying that? Uh, oh, it was uh, Grayson was saying. Hey, if I buy it, you're not buying it. That's right. Yeah. I said, truck on, dude. Do it. I I'll drink that beer. You can't. Speaking of, speaking of beers, do you guys have a. Uh, 
You guys have any decent beers this week? Outside of, you know, we're, we're going to touch base on our other, our, 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 our trip. Our adventure. Yeah. yeah. The Virgin beers are great. Yeah. Yeah, they we were. They were phenomenal. We, what was that one that uh, Grace and I drank? That big uh, uh, kiwi, kiwi something. It was a lager. Kiwi, kiwi sunrise or something like that. It was really good. I can't Clever remember. kiwi. Clever kiwi. kiwi. They got it. Nelson dry hopped Keller yeah. Pilsner unfiltered. Five percent. Delish. Mm. I had a big pour of that one. Yeah. Before we went down to the half door. So today I um you know on my on my scooter ride back from downtown, I, I stopped at North Park. Got some mechanical dankness. Mm-hmm. West Coast IPA. I mean a big West Coast guy that makes him the West best West Coast in town. Uh they that that beer it's a, a Chinook, Citra, Mosaic, uh Strata Hops. Super dank West Coast IPA. It was just phenomenal. Super yeah. good. Had that in a sandwich from Mastiff. It's great. Yeah. I'm going to go with a Brewery X's Battlesnakes Pilsner. We picked up at um, uh, Seaside. Oh, yeah. Brewery X. Never had anything from there before. Where are they at? I don't know. I don't see it on the can. 5.2% called Battlesnakes with big old snakes. Oh, yeah. They're in, uh, they're in Anaheim. Oh, okay. It's right up the road. Yep. And you can tell when I poured it, the glass is like all totally, totally, um, uh, what do you call it? Condensation because it's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You pull a glass out of the freeze, fridge or freezer. It's been really hot recently. Warm. Too warm for me. Like it's about 70, between 75 and 78 max. So the so Charlie, about that little trip we made, the Humble Sea. We yeah. had a couple other places too, though. We did. Humble Sea was our. Uh, can we talk about the pizza? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You okay, can talk about pizza. That Batam pizza was fantastic. Lights out. I mean, and I know my pizzas, and this thing was. I mean, well, we're sitting there, and I'm like, uh, "What kind of oven you guys running in there?" And the guy says, uh, or the gal comes back, and I said, "Before you go, it's probably a Mugliani." And she like, I have no idea. And she comes back, it's a Mugliannini, she says. I said, all right. I said, I have, I have the same brand. And uh, so then the owner came out, Ben, and uh, we talked him up about his pizzas and told him how delicious those two that we had were. They were fantastic. Uh, one was a, uh, I got the name of them here. Hold on a second. Um, one was a spicy honey. Uh, let me see. It's... And they called it, it had saprasata, tomato, mozzarella, and spicy honey on it. So saprasata is a spicy, uh, like, sausage. And then we had the prosciutto pie, which was like, on this one it says uh, rock salad. I don't know what a rock salad is, mm. but it's just, um, all it was was um, uh, arugula and um, prosciutto stacked on top of this thing with a little bit of cheese underneath it it was the uh, uh reggiano and let me tell you talk about two fantastic pies i was blown away and chris was quite happy other than he only got one bite of each so <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows one bite of every, everybody knows the rules one, one bite. bite everybody knows the rules and uh so anyways that was a a wonderful thing we had a couple of beers i don't remember what i had Anyways, it was nothing spectacular, but nothing unspectacular either. But it was just a, probably a lager is what I got. Anyways, that was a great thing there. But uh, as far as Humble Sea goes, we were we went to that Kooks event, and uh, they they took care of us. I mean, that was pretty nice. I mean, well, we, we didn't have to stand in line for an hour. That's right. We didn't have to stand mm-hmm. in line. First, we got there, and the line was, like, down the like the, <laughs> the, the road oh, wow. to get into the brewery. It uh-huh. was probably, like... I don't know. You probably to the door. I think everybody kind of stopped at the door and waited for the bartender, but there was probably 20 people ish, 25 mm, people more than that. In, in line waiting in the sun to get a beer. And then, you know, I, I kind of gandered around the corner and saw there was a little tent. And I was like, I'll bet you that's us. We walked in right to the front, right to the front of the kooks, uh, the kooks line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they, they let us taste this stout that they had. Uh, that they were releasing that day and boy they had a jumbo magnum and this thing the gal that was pouring it could barely lift this thing 
Mm. Yeah, I think it was a three liter, wasn't it? Yeah, it was big. A three liter of stout. It was, uh, you know, this for the kooks. It was a pastry stout. Mm. It's a. Uh, it was delicious um, too. Anejo mezcal barrel aged stout, which you know I was kind of a little skeptical on. We 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 tasted it. It was phenomenal. We'll we'll taste it down the road. I almost brought it today, but I'm like, do we want a regular stout mm-hmm. or do we want some Ghirardelli chocolate? Yeah, madness. Some pastry. Well, Either that, way, it was, it was delicious, a, and uh, that's where you you went straight for the uh, IPAs, and I went to the Foggies, and uh, we sat back there and chatted up a couple of guys that were, mm-hmm. uh, one of them was coming down here, and we told him where to go to get the good beer, and uh, so he was quite excited to get the info. He's excited, and, just like I'm excited to pop that park pass. Yeah, let's go. Too much chat about our trip, although we did hit... We hit Moonraker, which is a it's a huge brewery, mm-hmm. and uh, our buddy Brian was uh, uh, saying, "Oh, it looks like a bank outside," and it did look like a bank outside, but it, on the inside, it didn't resemble a bank at all. It was a really cool, really cool layout. How you look, you know, like so. So there was multiple uh, um, multiple rooms, right? Yeah. Like you, you walked into you walked into the barrel room, past the barrel room, and there was a. Uh, you know the bar, and then there was a big outdoor area. It was a really cool brewery. It's a couple a lot of little really offshoot uh, alcoves where there was seating too. Mm-hmm. So next up, we got that park pass that uh, uh, that India Pale Lager from uh, um, from Burgeon. Uh, this is Burgeon and Highland Park a uh, collab. It's a hoppy lager. They brewed it in collaboration with Highland Park up in LA. They have it hopped with Nelson, Citra, and Sapphire hops, and lagered to a crisp hoppy perfection. This bad, uh, this little, uh, this bad boy comes in at six percent. The uh, it's got the really cool can. The um, kind of the, the the knockoff on the national parks or the. Uh, There's a dog yeah, being the yeah. dog wants saddled a little up bit. over there or something. So the uh, um, <laughs> happy mm. little logger. So guys, the other day they had a little event for uh, for Nate down at the arbor. Cheers, mm. Nate. Yeah, Godspeed, so brother. Did. Stopped down and, and tasted some beers down there in hopes of uh, um, raising some funds. Yeah, well, there was a percentage that they were given from the sales that night. There was, there was. So they um, we spent plenty. So they uh, um, no, it was uh, that's great. You know, we got to have some, we got to have some tasty beers and, and a couple of wings. A little too loud for us to uh, yeah, record on site. Yeah, that was. We really appreciate them allowing us to record, mm-hmm. but in the long run, it didn't work out because of the sound. But uh, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll roll up to their uh, to their other facility, yeah. Escondido. One. Yeah, and do that. That would be probably a lot easier, sound wise. Yeah. So while we were there, we had uh, we had four beer guys, uh, four beers. We had that that Burl, which was the brown ale. Ooh, we had mm-hmm. Trivana, which is is always available. Um, we had Carl's Bad Crush, that that pale ale, and we had this Park Pass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were all good. They were great. They were great beers. Yep. the The brown was my favorite, just because I haven't had a brown for the so burl, long. Yeah. Yeah, the burl, yeah, tasted really, really good. It was good. It was it was <clears> really good. It's been a long time since I had, had a brown. I'm trying to think if we have had any here. I feel like we had like a a port. Yeah, it was like a porter. Yeah, Didn't we, we tried a porter. Porters, and then we, we have one from Def. Maybe. Could have been, yeah. I don't know. I'll I'll go down there and drink a whole bunch and find out. It was good though. I was, <laughs> hey, golly, it was, uh, it was really good. I was excited. Well, that that was a that was a cool little place down there. I mean, it's right there on uh, Kettner. Uh, I think it's thirteen twenty six Kettner. <clears throat> Parking right across the street. Yep. Oh, good good seeds. The chef there is that's who's doing yeah. the food. Oh, the good seed. Yeah. 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 Food chef was yep. pretty decent. Let me tell you. Those wings and we had wings and fries, right? Yep. Good tasties, but yeah, it was. It, it, that's a cool looking place. Yeah, the yeah. gal behind the bar was super nice. Yep. I mean, super nice. I mean, almost overly friendly. Must have been me and my beard, you know. <laughs> she thought Santa was coming. <laughs> yeah, she's exactly. Santa's get, Santa's I gotta make sure Santa's are happy. I, I've always wanted to sit on your lap. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, what do you guys think uh, of this beer fun. here? It's really good. It is great. So that uh, you know, once again, that's a that's a Burgeon and Highland Park uh, collaboration. Hoppy little lager mm-hmm. comes through. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. You definitely. Um, gosh, I'm a fan of like hoppy light beers. I feel like you can drink both a few those of are, them. Are big time 
drinkers, man. Those are tasty and not filling. Yeah. Smells super happy. Happy, but like uh, yet yet crisp, right? Mm-hmm. Super, uh, super crisp. Ah, we're rolling in here, man. So we got this. Uh, this is a virgin and a bergen. Virgin. Yep. And this is uh, Escondido IPA. I'm gonna tell you right now, it smells like an IPA. Good nose. Is this Virgin uh, and Escondido? Is that what? Yeah, the it's called the Oasis. Is the name of the. Beer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oasis. Yeah. I didn't realize that. So they're doing. Each of the breweries are doing their own. Versions. Like yeah. Desert Oasis. Yeah. Um, it says the Oasis on the front. Right, I'll just take a peek at the can. Check it out. You know what I'm liking is they're putting the hop profiles on there too. Mm-hmm. A lot, you know. Yeah, they. A lot of breweries are starting to do that. Virgin and Escondido. My bad. Never heard of Escondido Brewery. So. So the. Uh, truly my bad. West Coast IPA with Citra and Cascade hops. Uh, they they list right on the side who who else that you know they they use the the, uh, the two row the Pilsner and pale wheat malts. Um, it the, yeah. The West Coast IPA. I'm a. Uh, let's, I'm going to hear your version of it. I haven't tasted it yet. What do you think, Steve? It's good because I already had one last night. Oh, you did? That's right. You're the one that bought them. Yeah. Help yourself there, Chris. Oh, I will. <laughs> mm-hmm. glug, glug. You want a mug instead of that Ooh, little that dinky Big fan glass? of that. Uh, wow. So nice and smooth. A little uh, pours that, that nice West Coast IPA. Um, it's, it's not bitter. I can, you know, usually I'm tasting bitter hoppy. at the end of, um, yeah, it's mm. hoppy. Nice clean. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's really clean and crisp. Yeah. The no malt- ending to it. No, no sort of a dry ending more than a bitter ending. So yeah, so they say the malts are two row Pilsner pale wheat. So is that three types of malt? Yep. Two row Pilsner and pale wheat. Yeah, I think that, uh, um, golly, that's really good. It's like hoppy, clean, crisp. You get that um, little bit of hops on the back, but it's really dry. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing they so, know what they're doing down there. Yeah, no, they make uh, some phenomenal beers. The only thing is, is I don't, uh, I see just a certain like only three or four in the on the shelves. Mm-hmm. Maybe three different styles or different beers. Kind of would like to have more of a a broader selection of their beers. I mean, if that burl was in cans, I'd be buying it. Yeah, they probably had it in Crowlers. Yeah, I they, just, they said everything they had there was you could Crowler. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know that, you know, if you're looking at like a run, like I, I don't know how much beer you have to can, right? But the I can't imagine there's as many people that want that brown ale as they want that park pass. No, <laughs> I would agree with that. Know? I would agree with that. The tri- but I mean. Trini on or it's tri- that, that was a, the, t- the, t- the Trevina. Oh, yeah. yeah. Trivana or. Trivana, yeah. yeah. That was a that was a pleasant surprise that brown. It was, yeah. So, no, I'm glad I mean, we chose that one. Whoever, uh, whichever one of you well, guys, uh, you guys said, "What do you think, Grayson?" And Grayson says the bur- the burl, and I'm like, "That's what I was thinking," but I yeah. wasn't gonna, you know, crush your West Coast IPA dream. Yeah, because I would just uh, <laughs> I would do all loggers and and West Coast IPAs. Yeah, if you know, that, that would right. be our show, it'd just be the yeah. logger and West Coast IPA. And, so you know, they they had a peach haze. We didn't try that. That was a hazy IPA. They had old fashioned oaks, an oatmeal stout. Well, they had one uh, hazy. Not it wasn't on tap there. It was called Little Italy. Mm. It was a hazy they had down there. They had another like, hazy IPA called Everybody's Juicing. Oh yeah, I think I we did that. that that one time. Everybody's, mm. but we remember that um, we did the the fruit the the super. We had a couple of crowlers shipped down. Mm-hmm. Golly, I thought we. They did They also that. have a Mexican lager and a German pilsner. Yeah. And a blonde ale. Yeah. I saw all those on the, mm-hmm. on the list. You yeah. took a picture of that, yeah. right? Yep. I'll put it in the show notes. Everybody now, I'd like it. to go back down there and uh, check out more of their beverage. But, I mean, I, honestly, we should go to the big brewery. and. Yeah. I concur. Yep. Because I mean, you probably have even more of a selection I there. I would hope so. But it would probably be different, too. Well, the main brewery is in Carlsbad but, because that's where they started. Okay, where's their tap room? In, in Carl, and then they just started a new one in Escondido. So there's, well, I think there's three clo- three oh, locations. That's pretty good. I don't mind going to Carl's, man. I got people up there, man. Hang out on the beach. You may also have another one. Where's that? Four tap, three tap rooms and a brewery. That's pretty big. Yeah, I think you can do five tap rooms. 
Oh, that's like on a, on a license. Yeah. Oh, wow. You can have one brewery and then five. T- that's why, like, you know, some of those uh, spots uh, here in La Mesa have a spot downtown. And, yeah. You know, you're like, how does this happen? They used to have a, but yeah, no, that's a, uh, you get a tasting room, you buy a, you buy a bar and uh, turn it into your tasting room or whatever, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. first time I remember seeing that, like, Manzanita did that, right? Mm-hmm. They had a place down in Pacific Beach when they were rip, right. rest in peace. Yeah. So there's a brewery and tap room in Carlsbad, and there's the, uh, the Oasis, which is just getting started in Escondido, downtown Escondido, and then the Arbor, which is where we went in Little Italy. Okay, I like the Little Italy yeah. spot. That well, was, I think uh, for food, that's going to be great for them. I mean, yeah, just take out and just that whole area with all the those big high rise. Yeah, places there's a lot of buildings stuff, yeah. down there. People are right coming and going. A lot of business. It's, uh, Close to the airport. It's probably pretty nice during, you know, when the ball games are on down there. It's a little ways because we, yeah, we walked back right. from the, um, we went to the half door mm-hmm. and then me and Charlie walked back to the car, mm-hmm. which is a little over a mile, I think. You was know, it ferocious? No, it really wasn't. You just had to watch out for, um, <laughs> you know, there's a, uh, so we got to watch out where you're walking. People yeah. pick up their after their dogs, but not after their humans. <laughs> so yeah, the, it was, it was the, uh, but. But we actually walked right by um, the Modern Times uh, Coffee. Mm. Uh, there, there's a Modern Times. I guess they, the joint. I don't know if it's all Modern Times or if it's the the people that had the spaces partner. Mm-hmm. I think is well, what the lady kind of. They have alcohol at that bar. They have a bar. Yeah, they have like a, a cocktail lounge. Uh-huh. But then they have like, you know what? What caught my eyes was like, there's Ronald McDonald is sitting on the, you know, on a mm-hmm. bench or whatever. You could have a coffee with Ronald McDonald, or you could lay in like the the lay down chairs outside on the patio and have your coffee they had all these little Chase spots lounge that, chairs and stuff it was like a place that you going there i think me and megan are gonna go down there and have a coffee um, just because i'm like you could like spend an hour and it's like any one of the modern time mm-hmm. breweries you know you could spend an hour like just looking at things mm-hmm. you know like, they had the, beer on tap but it was probably orderville and, right and you know yeah it was fruitlands i'll give a uh, a review on that mm-hmm. moving yeah forward. i mean get some Get some get some uh, questionnaires going on. How, what do they got on tap there? Because that would be a interesting. Uh, I mean, if they had some some legit, some of their really popular beers. Yeah. I'm sure they don't. You know, I, well, I don't. I'm not sure that they. You know, but I I, I find it hard to believe you're going to go over there and get monster tones on tap. No, nope. no, I don't think so. I think you're going to just like you had thought. You're going to get I'm like out. <laughs> the Orderville. You're going to get the you know the, the modern grocery store beers, right? They they had they'll have cold brew would be my assumption. Yeah, but we will see. Maybe I'll be pleasantly it was, surprised. It was a cool place though. It was really cool. Yeah. No, I, uh We didn't we didn't want coffee at that hour, but they just I think they had it. They had like cold brew. Oh, that's mm. right. But they they, they had closed on like three o'clock. Yeah, we could have got a cold brew and mm. she said espresso though. That's what they have when the espresso bar is open. But oh, they closed okay. at three. All right. All right. I'm good. You know, I, I'm i not a sit in there, drink my coffee guy. I'm going to take it and roll. Not even that place? Uh, you know, I could probably sit in there for 10 minutes. I mean, well, a, a year ago, we rented, uh, um, we went hiking in Yosemite and we rented a, we rented a house inside uh, Yosemite down in w- Wawona, like down mm. in the, that portion of the, right. of the park. Just a, a house in that little, the little village. They were super cool. But this... This house had been somebody, this guy collected, um, if I was to guess the one thing, he, well, you couldn't guess one thing. You'd have to guess the top 10 things because it was like trains and like, but everything, like every surface of the wall was covered and it was all like, you know, curated. He had trains you could throw on and they, they went around the time. I mean, it was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This, this place, that's what that modern times place reminded me of was like a throwback to that. Like your whole vacation you could spend in that one little, you know. Pretty busy One place. Room. I mean, yeah. as far as stuff going on, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, we were there. We we were in and out. I mean, what we spend like forty five seconds. <laughs> yeah, it was there? it was quick. It was quick. So maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Maybe that wasn't the whole. <laughs> I'm sure you were right. I just I wasn't like. I mean, once they said ah, no beer and no espresso, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, Charlie ran out of there. I was. You saw me. I was three blocks ahead of you by that point. And uh, then we did walk through some uh, some areas that were uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, but we ended up back at our our car and jumped in there and skedaddled, headed out of no town. Yep. There we go. 
Well, so the uh, no, yeah, it was uh, it was great. Good beers. I you know I had never been to to Half Door either. Um, oh, you oh I didn't know that. That was I'm my sorry. first time being there. Really cool place. You're ever you know like real close to the ballpark, right? A block away. Yeah, mm. I mean you could see the park from there. Yeah, I've been to the stone. The stone has a small. They do. They have a little tasting room down there as well. Um, yeah, but nobody goes there. Uh, yeah, well, I've been there. I'm I've been kidding. There. Guess uh. I guess two thirds of our yeah. uh, uh, the podcast has been there. Half door brewery. Guess oh, these guys! Whoa! The um, I popped the stout. Just did you guys have any food there? We did. Okay, yeah. what'd you eat? So we, uh, golly, we did the the meat and cheese plate. We did mm. the pretzel bites. The four point bread. Four point six out of five. Or just, the um, we did the goat cheese, the fried goat cheese. Um, those we little, did a flatbread pizza. One other thing. Little pretzel dough balls. The pretzel uh, dough balls, right? um, yeah, the pretzel dough balls, and, and then, then we did the macaroni. Mac and and it cheese. was everything was phenomenal. Yeah, everything tasted. You know, great. we we got down there. So if I ate all the cheese board before I handed it over to them, <laughs> so I got fruit. Some fruit on here. I got fruit and a dried apricot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you wanted. You were like right. talking a lot. Uh, so uh, <laughs> now the uh, um, so I can't I can't speak to the. You know the 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 two grapes that Charlie left me were bruised. There was a the slice ap- of melon. The apricot had been sh- dropped on the ground. Pretty sure. Sh- I than think that. that was chewing gum. I don't think it was an apricot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all the all the all the food that I got to partake in was phenomenal, and it was it was great. It was uh, you know Charlie says I put off an aura of cheapness and aura <laughs> of cheapness, and I was <laughs> able to display that with my navigation of the happy hour menu. <laughs> well, you got something. What'd you get? What are you talking about? I did get some food. You I got ordered a couple, a couple of, of different things. A couple of happy hour. I got the goat, uh, the goat, the fried goat cheese and the pretzel balls. You know what? That tasted like fried goat cheese. Well, imagine that. Well, it's good. It's good. It wasn't you know, they cheese curds, that's for sure, man. You know, Fugazi. Anyways, we're talking Southern Grist. We're popping this stout now. Mm. And uh, this is the Humble Sea Southern Grist uh, collab. It was a virtual collab. And uh, it's pastry stout at 11.5, rocking it at 11.5. And it's uh, geared with Ghirardelli chocolate, mm. cocoa nibs, and toasted walnuts, and Veracruz vanilla beans. Now, let me tell you what. You're smelling that Ghirardelli and the co- cocoa nibs. Let me tell you that right now. Hand that over to that <laughs> young man over there. Young man. <laughs> mm-hmm. It'd be interesting if they did a stout. Like a, the chocolate, different cho- different chocolates. Like, oh my goodness, that mine's a perfect temperature. I'm going to tell you that right now. You definitely smell a lot of chocolate. Yeah, right? like the, the little vanilla. That's not barrel aged, is it? Mm-hmm. I don't think oh, so. Didn't say it. So part of that event they had last week, they had a bunch of uh, a bunch of bottles that you could pick up mm. from the you know the over the course of the last year. That was one of them. I hadn't seen. I wasn't part of the the Kooks Club when that got released. I they love the. Kooks I love this blends. bottle with it. Yeah, that matte finish mm-hmm. with just a black label on it. Super cool. That's a lot of breweries are going to that. Mm-hmm. I want my car to look like that. Yeah, <laughs> your Honda. <laughs> Still get it wrapped. Get yeah. a little. Get a little attention with that. So yeah, the pastry stout, Southern Grist. Mm-hmm. I, you know. We've had some adventures been to, there. Mm-hmm. Been to that brewery. Ooh, that's good. We've Man. told that story where we were five, six, and seven to taste that chocolatey uh, walnuts there. Mm. That's really good. Is that not the perfect temperature? Mm-hmm. In my opinion, yeah, it yeah. is. We've had a couple of stouts over too. Too way too cold. Yeah, yeah way too cold. Oh, you can hear yeah, it you chugging little, out of there. I see you got a little moxa cup there, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was helping him. you out. That's a uh, compliment of. Uh, Ryan. Ryan, we... Our wonderful hosts, Ryan and Brian, up in Stockton, Sacktown. Rockland. Rockland. I think we're... uh, Rockland, Ryan. I think uh, Ryan lives in... And Track 7, Brian. That's right. So we... uh, Track 7 was massive. We went to... uh, Yeah, it was very, very big. Um, We went to uh, Uh, Moxa while we were there. We um, We tried to pop some bottles on site. Originally, our I think our um, our schedule got kind of messed up. We were supposed to go to Moxa first. We ended up at Moonraker first, and we kind of missed uh, the person we were going to meet uh, in passing. So we uh, 
uh, we we showed up with some bottles to pop there, and we got the they put the kibosh on us. Mm. But in the end, we popped it was some bottles safer in the that parking way, lot, I think. I think, and uh, so we um, that's where that's where we ended up with uh, with the glasses. Yeah, that was that was super. Gosh, it was so nice. Great you know, food there too. Phenomenal. Oh. Great food. The uh, you know the beers were great. Uh, the 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 service was great. Um, you know, outside of uh, you know, yeah, it was great. Did you, you know, walk the, a bottle back in there after? I did give the guy a bottle. He gave us great service. Well, so we brought in we brought in a bunch of like really really good beers, right? Mm-hmm. Like a barrel aged Horus. We brought a because like, their goal in July is to empty your fridge, right? <laughs> to make to put a pretty good dent to it. Yeah, to make so, more room. <laughs> so me and Charlie went up there, like we you know. Like we were going to the the bottle share mm-hmm. wars, yeah, right? Okay. Like we had like yeah. we we knew we were probably going to pop well five or six beers loaded, for and uh, beer. we were armed to the teeth. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we had ammo probably, after ammo after I mean, ammo. We, we probably had probably thirty bottles of beer. Oh yeah, on the on the conservative side, mm-hmm. right? Like, and every one of them was good, but there were some real big hitters in there too. So we had brought some bottles that were. Ryan had wanted, I, I got him a, a Moxa, or I got him this collab from, from Sam. So a lot of the beers that we brought in there were Moxa. Yeah. Um, that, you know, we wanted to share. We brought in a, you know, Magnum, mm-hmm. wanting to share it with the people. You know, we're like, hey, we just want to, we want, you know, this much of it. Yeah. And then you guys can give it to whoever. You yeah. know? Pour it for everybody um, else in here. But, you know, like, I understand. Like, they didn't, you know, I don't think they, they knew who, uh, um, they didn't, they didn't know, know who the, the person we were going to meet wasn't there. And the, uh, mm-hmm. um so unfortunately, we weren't able to pop them. But they were; those guys were bummed out. Yeah, I think one of the guys offered to trade us. I don't know if he like it's kind of weird. I think he offered yeah, I don't to trade know what us that was. three bottles that we had brought in for like one bottle that we could have got behind the bar if we <laughs> wanted to just leave them there. Mm-hmm. We declined that. Yeah. Gave him another bottle as a parting gift. He was super excited. Wow, he better be. It was a great bottle of beer. That was really good. Mm-hmm. Five hundred milliliter milliliter again wow the perfect yeah, no, size I'm a fan for of that. three people we've had some good stouts this is in that curt some... we have said it had some decent stouts huh steve this is pretty, this is pretty good well don't worry because you don't drink those so yeah. wow it's only for chris and it's and not I barrel age yeah, non-barrel age yeah i'd love so, yeah. to taste that yeah. with uh yeah a little barrel action on it that'd be interesting mm-hmm. you know what i wouldn't be surprised if southern grist did that at some point how we'll see i don't know I mean, they have that selling. big, like, right where we parked, their barrel room was right around the door. Like, that was the, I don't know, it said something on the door, but it was, like, Humble Sea. And, and that's that's where they do all their uh, special projects. And, mm-hmm. um, like, it's off around the corner in another kind of kind of warehouse. But Well, I think it might have been connected, how big that place was. It might have been connected on the back end there. No, it was, really? like, yeah, it was a separate building. It was across the bike track. Oh, that's right. You're right. And the train track. That's right. So guys, we uh, to run back through the we had the the DDH authentic uh, Hellas. Uh, we had the the Park Pass. We had the Burgeon and Escondido. And celebrate that that move to Escondido, and finally the Humble Sea uh, Southern Grist Stout. What uh what was your guys' favorites? Go ahead, Steve. I'm gonna go with the pastry stout. Yeah, that was. I mean, the other ones are awesome. But what do you wow. think, Chris? Uh, I'm going with that pastry style. The uh, just is, is I'm going to say because it is humble C that loops in both the first can <laughs> and the last <laughs> bottle. Yeah, that that uh, man, they're they're DDA that mm-hmm. authentic. That's a phenomenal beer. Yeah, absolutely, the, um, that's kind of where I was where I was fighting between those two. But I, I do think that it was three like very very good beers. I love that. You know, I love everything Highland Park does. Their loggers are are lights out. You know, if you look back to that Humble Sea, uh, the the uh, one of my favorite beers from the Humble Sea fourth anniversary was the beer that they did with uh, was that that lager that they did with um, uh, Humble Sea in Highland Park. They make mm-hmm. you know some of the best light beers and uh, or lagers and, and pilsners in Southern California. I think it was a DDH pilsner. I think I like it. Maybe we it should do this again. DDH lager. Hey, and we will. <laughs> we will. So until next time, I think we're all uh, all in on that Humble Sea. Until next time, I guess we have a we got a stout show coming up. Mox's mm-hmm. stout yeah. show. We'll do all Mox's stout. I like it. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. 
If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only, and compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.